What is going on guys, Vlad with SolusPLC.com coming to you live from a hotel room and today we're going to be flashing the firmware of a brand new PLC which is the L24ER and before we jump into the flashing I wanted to essentially go over every single step and show you uh, every single item that needs to happen uh, before you actually get to the control flash software which you can as you can see is running in the background so the first thing first is of course you need to be able to communicate with the PLC in question and you can do so with uh, different methods depending on your PLC type uh, in the most recent PLCs just as I will be demonstrating to you you can do so on Ethernet but you can also choose to do so over USB or serial ports now I've heard uh, some people say that it's usually a safer bet to flash your PLC over USB because it is a uh, more stable connection. However, I've never had any problems over Ethernet. Therefore, that is what we're going to do. Um, so opening RS Lynx Classic, like I said, we do need to communicate with the PLC and I already have a driver set up, but I want you to, I want to show you from the ground up. So I'm going to go into communications, configure drivers, and this is where you can add new drivers. As you can see, it has all the drivers uh, listed, which I'm using. And I'm going to go into Ethernet IP device, like I've said, my uh, PLC is on Ethernet. It's going to create, uh, it's going to give it a generic name and append a different integer. As you can see, I already have a one drive, therefore it's going to create a drive with a two. I'm going to say yes. So here you have, um, I guess, an option. So you can either browse the whole subnet or you can browse a remote subnet. So if you're connecting through a router, that might be a uh, option for you, but I'm going to browse the local subnet since I'm connected directly from the laptop to the PLC, just uh, one ethernet cable, nothing else, not even a switch. What's important to select here is the, um, I guess the adapter through which you are connecting because as you can see, so first of all, I have a couple of virtual machines that are running, but I also have um, wireless adapter set up. So there's going to be different IP addresses. So you do need to select the right IP. Uh, address based on the card that you are going to be using. Then I'm going to hit apply, hit OK, and the driver is going to be created. I'm going to close out of this new drive window and I'm going to look at the driver we've just created. And if I expand this, as you can see, that's my processor. So the full part number, if you're curious, is the 1769-L24ER-QB1B. It is a uh, somewhat cheap entry level uh, RS Logix 5000 processor. If you're curious, it is about a uh, thousand bucks on eBay, 800 to a thousand. And uh, it's pretty nice what you get. You get the PLC and you also get some embedded discrete IO. Now, once we communicate with the PLC, what you can do is before you start flashing is of course you, um, you should be curious about the current firmware. So what you can do is Go into the device properties and you will see the revision listed right there. So as you can see right now, it's 20.012. And it is a PLC which you've seen me use in a couple of my tutorials before. So I just wanted to bring it up to the latest and greatest firmware. And in order to do so, we need to do a couple of things. And actually, I wanted to, I guess, demonstrate. Uh, so this is all possible because I've changed the IP address on my card to match the address on the PLC. Now, if you're not um, unable, if you're essentially unable to communicate with your PLC, one of the most common problems is that your IP is not on the same subnet. So what you need to do is go into your control panel. If you don't know how to do that, just type control panel in your search bar, then you hit property, then you get into your network connections. So actually, let's take a step back. So from control panel, uh, you will look at large icons. This is the preferred style from me. Network and sharing center. And here you can check check the adapter settings. And of course, you need to pick the, uh, the card through which your computer is connected to the PLC. You can hit properties. You will then choose an IP address on this TCP IP version 4. And then you need to set the IP address on the same subnet. So as you will see that my uh, laptop's IP address is 192.168.1.200 and the PLC is 192.168.1.11. So anything which is on the same IP address is going to work. Now we're going to close out of this. Like I've said, since we're on the right IP, we can see the PLC, we can ping it. It's all good and communicating as expected. Now we're left with these windows. We can also close out of RS Lynx Classic. 
we are not going to change the IP address. So I'm just going to hit OK, close this. And we are back to, so let's go back. So the first screen that you need to go through on your control flash software as it launches is going to be selecting the right PLC. So of course, I've explained that this is the part number that I'm using. I'm going to hit next. It's going to pop up uh, RS Links Classic once again. And here I need to select the same way that I've selected the PLC before. Uh, so I'm just going to drill down and select the PLC. I'm going to hit OK. And then the two revisions that I have here. So this is very important. So the firmware revisions installed on your computer are going to be what um, what you're able to essentially download to your PLC. So what you need to do is go to the Rockwell website and download the right revision that you're looking to go for. Uh, furthermore, when you go to the website, you will see that Rockwell Automation actually has this compatibility and download section. And here you can enter your uh, PLC part number and you can see which firmware it is um, it is compatible with so as you can see uh, this PLC it is compatible with versions as you can see so 30.012 30.011 all it's all compatible but um, if you go up to as you can see this 30.012 it is no longer so it has no known issues or dependencies but I guess it is um, it is compatible, but uh, it might have some different uh, stuff going on. And uh, furthermore, of course, if you have different or older style PLCs, then you might not be able to upgrade to those versions at all. And you can, of course, see, you know, the abnormalities. You can look at different features which are available or not available with different versions and uh, pick accordingly. But I'm going to download this. And as you can see, there's a chart, of course, that says not compatible depending on, on the PLC. But anyways, I'm going to download this and we're going to continue with the flash in just a moment all right so once you've downloaded the file what you're going to be left with is actually this um the plc name underscore the uh, firmware revision dot dmk and it's not a file that uh, your system is likely to recognize so what you need to use is if you type in your search bar this dmk instruction tool it will bring up this window and essentially allow you to find all the dmk files and apparently i already had the uh, revision 30.11 30.011 in uh, the folder when I installed uh, RS Studio 30. Therefore, I'm just not going to use the file that I downloaded, but I am going to use all these files. All you need to do is hit extract, and it may prompt us to close this control flash. If not, it's just going to ask us to reopen the tool once that's finalized, and we can proceed with uh, the uh, flash, of course. So we're just going to give this a second and come back once everything is complete. All right, so it looks like everything went well. I had no errors in importing the files. I'm going to go back into Control Flash, hit Next, select the PLC that I've selected before, browse to the right um, to the right device, hit OK, and then as you can see, now I have this version 30.011, which is exactly what we wanted to uh, install on our PLC. I'm going to hit next and then I'm going to hit this finish. Of course, it's going to warn us that if anything happens with the PLC while you are flashing, uh, make sure that you don't power off, you, your laptop is uh, plugged in, everything is good, you're not going to touch your cable. We are going to begin the firmware flash. So once again, uh, it will tell you that be, uh, be careful that if, this, if the SD card which is inside of your PLC is locked out, then you might have issues and you will have um, compatibility issues. Let's see here. The target device is not in proper mode to accept an update, which means that we need to uh, set the PLC to program mode. So I'm actually going to reach over. All right, guys, I actually had a small snag. So apparently you never need to go drill down to the backplane. So when you select your processor here, uh, the common thing to do on all processors is to drill down and select at this level. But what you need to do is actually select it at this level, but also put the processor in program mode. Hit OK, and we should be able to select 30.011. Hit on Next, hit Finish, and we should begin the firmware upgrade. Hit Yes. Hit OK, and the upgrade should begin to the right firmware. So if everything goes right, you should see that this transmitting update is, of course, uh, counting up. 
so the blocks are being transmitted to the PLC and at the end of the sequence you should get a confirmation message like I said be very careful not to unplug any power uh, don't use any low power laptops don't use any weird cables that you think are damaged and or uh, can cause you issues uh, don't unplug the cable at any cost make sure that everybody's aware that's walking by uh, don't move your laptop and things of that nature but let's come back as soon as we get that confirmation message all right so this only took a couple of minutes but as you can see there is a green message what appears at the confirmation of the update status and it says update is complete please verify the new firmware update before using the target device in its intended application we're going to hit okay brings us back to the control flash main screen but we can go back into our links here I'm going to open the application I'm going to browse through the exact same driver that we've used before and I believe the device should have kept the IP address which it did and I'm going to go into the vice properties and as you can see the new revision is going to be 30.011 thank you guys for watching and uh, I will see you next time thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye